all started in 2005 when Lou Barelli wanted to promote conversations about the most important topics in media. 15, 15 years later, now the summit comes full circle. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Catato. Alongside me, Julia Tilly, for the 15th annual Dr. Louis B. O'Donnell Media Summit, the red carpet show. Mm -hmm. And 15 of them now, Julia, we're coming full circle. It's a great day to have a media summit. Yeah, like you said, we're going full circle. We're going back to the first ever media summit topic. We're kind of revising a little bit, checking in on it, and seeing how trust in the media has changed over the past 15 years, which I think is super important in this current climate. And obviously those professionals that are speaking to the future of the broadcast industry, mm -hmm. let's go back to where it all started. The first summit, October 27, 2005, the topic, why don't we trust the media and how can the media recover the trust of the viewers? Ken Auletta was the moderator mm -hmm. for that media summit. And then after that, the topics just started to flourish. They started to take off. We had uh, topics range from media impact on sports, media evolution, including technology, we had diversification and inclusion in the media to now over the past couple of years we've been seeing a lot of coverage on fake news versus mm -hmm. what's real news really trusting the media versus not trusting the media how important is it Julia for uh, these professionals in the industry to cover these topics speak to these Oswego students I think it's absolutely completely necessary at this point for media summits and also you know not media summits just as people as media consumers I think it's incredibly important to be kind of educated, knowledgeable, and to have the chance as someone who wants to go into the media industry to actually sneak with people currently in the field and kind of get their take on everything. It's absolutely incredible. Well, first person we're speaking to today, the founder of the Media Summit. We're taking it all the way back to 05 when it first started. And we're here with Lou Borelli today, the class of 1977 at SUNY Oswego. Lou, thank you so much for joining us today. I am thrilled to be on the J&J &J show. <laughs> so, Lou, first, first question I'll ask you is, since it's the 15th year, it's a very mm -hmm. special occasion. We're going to ask you all the way back, what was your drive, your motivation to start this in honor of Doc O'Donnell? The simple fact, I wanted to bring people that I had worked with uh, in my career in the media business to Oswego to be able to give the students a personal first row seat in finding out how they got where they got, how they could be helpful, what they should be speaking to. To me, it was all about bringing people to campus to experience the great students we have here in Oswego. Now, in your career, you're kind of like a pioneer in the cable mm -hmm. industry. Um, yeah. How would you say that you have seen trust in the media develop over the past couple of decades? Well, I think what's happened with media or journalism, and, and specifically, is we've moved from an era when, you know, when I was growing up, you had three network shows. It was one night, you know, it was once a week or once a night. And today we have instantaneous, immediate, you know, to almost overload of information and so I think what has happened is the responsibility for determining what's real and what's not or the context is really more on the viewer less on the editor or the managing editor of those companies that distribute I think that's the biggest difference and Lou, the last thing I'll ask you is that obviously we started in 05 with being able to trust the media. Then we mm -hmm. go through all of these different types of topics. And now we're here, 2019, and we're back to trusting the media 15 years later. What does that say about today's industry that we're still talking about these issues? Well, I think what it, what it says is, is that we are a, a, a nation of silos. And there are people that are more comfortable hearing the news delivered from uh, networks that are more in their line of thinking and I think what's missing is how do we bridge that gap because otherwise you end up with people just hearing one point of view and, th and it becomes almost like you know birds of a feather they stick with their groups and it doesn't do much for the country at large. Well, thank you so much Lee for joining us today we're gonna head thank over you. to our red carpet reporter Michael Jean. Michael how's it going over there? Julia I'm here with Brian Moritz who is the faculty director of this year's summit how do you feel today? I'm very excited. You know, we, this has been something we've been working on for 10 months now, getting this summit ready. And obviously the Media Summit is one of the premier events on campus and the, the showcase event for Comm Studies and for SCMA. So we can't wait for everyone to see the, the fruits of our work and our student eboards work for the past couple months. Cool. Um, so I hear it's the first time uh, mediating this whole program. How do you feel? Excited, like you just said. I mean, to see 10 months worth of work, to see the students and the campus community just come together for an event like this, it's awesome to be a part of, and it's humbling to be have such a small role in showcasing what us we go is and what we can do. Thank you. So, um, what are your thoughts about the panel and the career connectors this year? Oh. 
I mean, it's murderer's row. It's the, 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 the experience, the passion, the energy that they all bring to the stage and all bring to their careers is something we're all going to see on the show. And then the career connectors are people who love Oswego so much and love giving back to the students. I think it's going to be just a great event for everybody. Thank you. Well, obviously, thank you, Michael. And Julia, I really liked what, uh, what Lou was talking about there with, with bridging the gap uh, and being able to trust the media once again. What were your thoughts on that? Oh, I think that it might take a while because I think periodically things are kind of on this little cycle. Um, so it's going to take a while, I think, for the media to kind of gain that trust back. I mean, the past couple of years have been very um, rough. I guess reputation as someone trying to pursue a career in this. I've heard multiple times people asking why I want to go into a field like this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, it's something that we're going to have to work towards, but we're the next generation. And I think we can try to work towards bettering that reputation. You know, I like that more than anything what you just said. The <laughs> next generation of people, the, the ones that are really listening in the audience to the moderator, to all of the panelists mm -hmm. that get to absorb all these ideas. And then they go out and they implement those ideas into their next stages Definitely. of their broadcasting, their journalist career. It's a really exciting thing to see. We're going to get to a, a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to sit down with MSNBC anchor Kendis Gibson. We're going to have more from our red carpet reporter, Michael Jean. You're watching WTOP 10's coverage of the 15th annual Dr. Louis B. O'Donnell Media Summit. We'll be right back. Welcome back to WTOP 10's Red Carpet Show on the 15th annual Dr. Lewis B. O'Donnell Media Summit. Today we have Kendis Gibson, you know him from maybe CNN, ABC, or Weekend MSNBC Live anchor. Kendis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank today. you guys for having me. Appreciate it. So, Kendis, the first thing that I, I really wanted to ask you is that this is not your first media summit here at Oswego. Obviously, you've been a panelist in the past. Yeah. Now you're a moderator. Yes. And you talked about diversity and equality in your past media summits within media. Yeah. And now you're a moderator. How much does that excite you? And what are you looking forward to the most in terms of spreading a message to the audience? Today? Excite or stresses me out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. It's um, you're the moderator, you're basically the quarterback, you're the person that's supposed to um, land the plane and um, hopefully it all goes great. It's just a different uh, sort of dynamic, I guess. Um, I like just being on the receiving end of the questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, James and I talked a little bit before about how this is the 15th annual media summit. It's the yeah. same theme or a little revised version of the same theme from the first one. Yeah. What do you think that says about the media in general, that we, are, 15 years later, are still talking about whether or not we can trust the media? I mean, it just means that we have trust issues <laughs> as a society. Um, I, you know, it's, it's, that's always going to be one of those factors, I think, as long as there's journalism um, in this country, because th that's one of the core parts of democracy is to, to be able to trust the information that you're getting on any given day. Little did we know, 14 years ago, when we had the summit, um, that it would be a completely different factor of where we are when that question comes up of trust. And, and so it's kind of ironic that we're back where we were back then. So, Candice, one of the biggest things about trust is credibility coming from the anchor. You know, and yeah. you yourself currently work at MSNBC. Yeah. You know, you have guests on the show from both sides of the political parties. Yeah. But for the most part, it's a liberalistic point of view that MSC, MSNBC offers. How do you maintain that credibility with viewers knowing that it's such a liberalistic platform? And what's your advice to students coming through uh, that want to be in the industry, that want to have a credible background? I mean, listen. Yes, at prime time, most of the MSNBC shows have a bet. Um, our goal uh, during our daytime shows is to be as fair as possible to both sides. We do, and it is encouraged sometimes, to be able to give our opinions. And it depends on what our opinions are. So it might come off as a, as a left, um, left bent for us, but it, it's... The goal of the network, for the most part, is to try to stay in the middle of the road during at least the day side. Primetime is its own beast. Fox does a different formula with their primetime as opposed to during the day. Um, advice for students who are looking to... Just maintain credibility in the industry and be able to build themselves up. Maintain credibility, in, I mean, it's just trying to look at both sides. But uh, that said, I don't think that there are both sides to 
every every issue, or there are not multiple sides to every issue. Um, whether or not there's global warming is not a multi-pronged issue. Um, so just try to be to, to go into any situation with an with an open mind. I guess is what I'd say. Thank you so so much for joining us today. Thank it was a you. pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. So today, James, I was able to go to the Empowered Women Empowering Women panel. Okay. During the panel, we had Media Summit career connectors as well as panelists: um, Christina Dominguez, Julian Mezental, Sharon Newman, and Jennifer Williams. Um, they all held a discussion on women empowerment in the media, and was moderated by Oswego State student Ayana Collins. Okay. So the panelists were all involved in different aspects of the media, which I thought was very interesting and a great representation. Um, they talked about what it was like to work in a field that's normally considered to be male-dominated. Um, each panelist shared their own personal stories and experiences and kind of gave advice um, for current students, um, both male and female, which I thought was a great, a great use. Um, they kind of discussed um, a very a wide variety of topics, so I think that it was able to resonate with every single student individually. Yeah, and that's uh, women in media is incredibly powerful. And uh, you know, honestly, what's what's your opinion on women involvement in in the media? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's um, times are changing, which I'm very very excited about. Um, during the panel, actually, some of the panelists discussed that they think that in this day and age tolerance for like harassment and sexism in the workplace is a lot lower. People are more willing to step in if something is unjust, which gives me a lot of hope. And I know that should I be put in a position, I would be, you know, it's difficult. Okay. It's hard to say because sometimes people feel like if they speak up against something, they might lose their career. Right. Um, so that sort of active bystander really comes in handy in those cases. Um, but I completely feel like backed up by my own peers in this day and age, and I think that I'd be able to speak up on my own behalf and on behalf of others. It, you know, it's wonderful because today in media, it's a time for equality, it's a time for diversity within the, within the workplace, especially in a broadcast and a journalistic viewpoint. You know, it's just, it's just wonderful to see. Mm -hmm. And panelists and career connectors, they went to classes this morning, mm -hmm. and it was it was a great way to, to connect with, with the students in general. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, overall, the the uh, the women the women panelists, and um, excuse me, excuse me, I I lost my place, ladies and gentlemen. But overall, yeah, overall, no, it's um, it's a great sign to see all the inclusion in the workplace. Definitely. It's a great time uh, to have so many people be involved, and mm -hmm. not forget, you know, not forget where where people came from and. And, and have people, like everyone in the, in the workplace. Yeah, and I definitely think it really resonated with a bunch of the students. Um, they all took a different place, um, a different perspective, basically. They each grabbed something that somebody said. Every, unique, every experience is so unique. Um, so I think it really benefited all the students, male and female, to hear everyone speak. Okay, so we're gonna throw it to, we're gonna throw it to Asat now. I guess I, um, what I got from it is like them having self-worth in their job. So like they'll get into these industries or like, a certain position and like their coworkers like are like treat them nasty or differently just because of their gender and they have to decide whether it's like their battle to fight or whether they should just leave which I feel like both sense is a powerful thing to just even like think about that concept for yourself I think um, what I learned from today's panel is that you're allowed to take risks and stuff, and when you take risks, it, it'll be okay for you because you'll have your path. You'll have your path to go wherever you want and stuff, and you'll know where you want to go. You're joined right now by Julian Mesensol. Thank you so much for joining us today, Julian. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, can you talk to me a little bit about how you kind of got your foot in the door, so to speak, as a woman in the media industry? Yeah, so I am a wedding photographer in the Rochester area. So when I was first starting, I kind of just had to find my clientele, and I needed to take like any kind of job that I could before I could gain the clients that I was looking for. Because when you start from nothing, you've got to start from something. So a lot of it took a lot of time, um, just working really hard to try to find the people who I ideally really want as clients. So it's a lot of time, patience, not giving up in what you really want to do. So that's pretty much how 
I found a lot of my clients. You know, what, what's your what's your main message to women going into an industry of, you know, broadcast or, or journalism that really want to break into the industry but might not have the opportunity to, they feel like there might be a disadvantage or it might not be an equal opportunity for them? Yeah, so you just really need to stand out in your workplace and just being a woman, you need to make sure that not only you're standing out from the men, but you also want to stand out yourself. So you definitely want to find ways where you are unique and your personality stands out or you bring something special to the table where you are the person they really want to hire and be around. And during the panel, actually, you spoke about that because yeah. you started out working um, not for yourself. Mm -hmm. You worked for a newspaper, I believe, yep. right? Um, and then you kind of decided that's not what you wanted to do. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so when I graduated, I had my first job. I worked at it in a newspaper, and it's not exactly what I was picturing it to be when I started, and I just felt very unfulfilled. I wanted something a little bit more, um, and so I just kind of, I left that position, and I just decided, like, hey, like, I think I could be my own boss. I'm very organized. I have my stuff together, like I think I could do this. So I was just like, I'm going to try being an entrepreneur and I'm going to try to see if I can manage my own self and be my own boss and create my own schedule. So it's some, it's not for everybody. Some people like working for companies and having that security. But for me, I liked having my own control and figuring out what I want to do, how I want to run my business. Um, and it's not exactly how everyone might run their own. So it's just something I found that works for me. So. Yeah, it's something I'm very happy that I ended up doing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jillian. Panelists and career connectors went to classes this morning to talk about their experiences in the media field, uh, answer questions, offer advice. It was an overall great experience to learn from very knowledgeable minds in the broadcast journalism industry. Correct. It's yeah. just it's just an absolute uh, fantastic opportunity for college students to be able to get that experiences. Uh, right now. We're going to throw it over to the red carpet to our uh, red carpet reporter, Michael Jean. To see what you got, Michael. Thank you very much. Here at the work carpet, it's getting a bit busy right now, but I'm here with some students who are attending the media summit today. How are you guys doing today? Doing, doing good. Great. So, um, we all are juniors, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so you know, today we have a meeting about media evolution. Today, like, what are you, what are your thoughts about it? Um. It's great, you know, like, uh, it, this is a gathering, you know, where alumni are coming and we get to look at them for, like, inspirations and sorts. Um, and we're, most of us are here in the same major, so, you know, that's convenient for us. And it's a great time to make connections. Um, bouncing off of what he said, I think media evolution is so important that we discuss and learn about it because especially a lot of us are broadcasting majors and we're going into this industry and we need to be able to understand what this means for us and also what it means for the world because understanding how media works excuse me, as a consumer is really important as well and so I think that's why we've got an amazing panel that we're here to see today and it's really cool. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. Thank you. We're going to go to a quick break. After the break, we will get sounds from Eric Franz so and much. our very own GM and co-event director of the Media Summit, Josh Holfith. You're watching the 15th annual Dr. Louis B. O'Donnell Media Summit coverage on WTOP 10. Welcome back to WTOP 10's red carpet show coverage of the 15th annual Dr. Louis B. O'Donnell Media Summit. And going right into things, WTOP 10's general manager and the co-event director of the Media Summit, Joshua Holfeth, got a chance to sit down, get interviewed, and talk about how the Media Summit is more than just a great opportunity, regardless of the topics being discussed. Yeah, I think the thing that's unique about the Media Summit is that even though it happens every year, it's still different than anything else that happens on campus throughout the entire year. So it kind of gives an opportunity for everybody uh, to experience something new and um, every year. And that goes the same with like the student media groups. You know, they're able to have the opportunity to cover this event and, uh, and cover it in however way that they want to. I know that students will gain a lot um, just because the people that we have coming are so interesting and the discussion that we're having is, is, is so relevant, um, especially for people that want to start working in the media field. 
very unique that we get to do as Oswego State students is go to a Career Connector event at 4.30 in the yep. Tyler Art Gallery. It's kind of a chance to speak to people in the industry, kind of find out if they have any advice, anything like that, um, which I think is very beneficial. I certainly will be attending, and not just for the free refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Um, on the topic of networking, Career Connector Eric Franz, um, a career coach for the performing arts and um, fine performing arts at SUNY Oswego, has very helpful tips and advice for students in the networking, trying to network. I think um, something that students are going to gain from that entire experience um, is expertise from professionals in the field. Um, there is a lot of knowledge that you can gain from people that have actually been in the field and done the work that students want to do. So I think that's the big takeaway that they, they can get from this. Networking is super important. Um, this industry is a huge industry, but a small industry as well, in a sense, because a lot of people know a lot of people, right? Um, so networking is a huge tool, a huge asset to have, because it allows, like I said before, it allows the employer to get to know a little bit more about you, because company culture is a huge, huge thing as well. So that's something that students kind of look past as well, um, because when networking comes to mind, students think about, okay, like I need to network with the Lou's and the Al, Al Rokers of the world. Um, but as you all go into the field, networking with, with yourself is also major as well, because you might be going on to doing something at this, this company, at this network, um, and when you're further along in your field, you're going to be able to call whoever your, your peer was um, and get some valuable information from, from them as well. So networking with your peers is a huge asset to have as well. So overall, Julia, mm -hmm. it's just a really, really good opportunity yeah. that not a lot of other places in the United States get an opportunity to just connect mm -hmm. with so many knowledgeable minds in this industry. What do you think about that? Personally, I'm very excited to ask my questions. I have a lot of questions being assumed to be SUNY Oswego graduate. Um, right. Yeah, from the broadcasting Stressful, department. Stressful, obviously. Oh, of course. <laughs> I have so many questions that are coming up, and I cannot wait to ask people who are experienced. Um, and have this sort of basis of being, you know, a SUNY Oswego grad as well. And the cool thing about this Career Connectors is that it's a good mixture of people that are fresh out of the industry mm -hmm. and people that are veterans in of the course. industry. Not just from Oswego, but from so many different places. We have people from Northwestern, graduates mm -hmm. from Syracuse University, and so many other colleges and universities, including our own SUNY Oswego, yes. obviously. Overall, like you said, the refreshments, the great <laughs> perk, obviously. But the experience that you're going to yeah. get on top of that it's absolutely invaluable, mm -hmm. honest to God. Definitely. And that'll be all for the red carpet show for the 15th O'Donnell Media Summit. Thank you so much for tuning in. But don't go anywhere because at 3 p.m., the actual media summit with the panel and the moderation with Candace Gibson will take place in the Waterman Theater. For all of us here, all of the crew, for Michael Jean and, uh, and Julia Tilly, I'm James Catato. Thanks for watching.